Almost as if every item in the room had, until recently, been happily positioned on the ceiling. Bef ah, okay. Before falling straight down onto the floor. Um, Susano, do you know something? <laughs> it's me! I did it! I'm the killer! What? <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am the Story Driven Gamer, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are hopping back into the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. A lot happened. We got um, Gina and Toby, of course, um, help us find this workshop that we find ourselves in. But before that, we went to Madame Tuspell's. We got to finally see the professor exhibit, and um, it just made me <laughs> it just made me even more confused, to be frank. Like my whole um. One of my prevailing theories up to this point had been that I thought a wax figure was used for the deception, and it still seems to be the case, based on what we know. But I thought that a wax figure was maybe what was put in the machine, and then they, you know, they dropped Asmund's body from the balloon. But we found a little piece of glass. I guess we haven't confirmed it, but they concluded that it was from the window, you know, the broken window. And it was found, um, I guess in the pocket of the Professor Mannequin. So that makes me think, the only conclusion I can come, come to is that that's what fell through the roof, is the Professor's wax figure. That's probably why it was stolen in the first place, right? For this, uh, for this deception. But then that turns my whole theory on its head. I mean, we found out that there is some kind of trap door, um, in the machine. So, maybe the real, uh... Mr. Asman was put in the machine, he dropped through the floor, was killed there. They, you know, none of the, I don't know if this even makes sense. And then <laughs> the body crashed through the window, and then they, re they replaced the bodies. I don't know. Like I said, it's getting more and more confusing, but that just, that just makes me more and more excited, t to be frank. Because then I know it'll all come together eventually, and I like not knowing where it's going. Um, the other interesting thing about the Professor Wax figure is that who is missing his head. So I've been thinking a lot about that. And one, again, I always like to throw the occasional wild, uh, wild theory out there. But I was thinking about it. Is there a chance that maybe, like, going back to the actual incident, you know, the actual incident that the uh, Wax figure exhibit is based off of. But if you remember, they said, like, the professor was put to death or whatever, he was buried in the grave, but then he actually, you know, rose from the dead as it were. I'm assuming he just wasn't dead. Um, but he survived and he got out of the grave and Enoch Trevor witnessed it. Is there a chance that, like, the professor, like, rose from the dead, Enoch Trevor witnessed it, maybe the professor killed, um, Enoch Trevor, or maybe, or maybe the professor is the Enoch Trevor that we no, or the one that's, you know, apparently alive. This way it gets confusing, but my point is if the the professor that came out of the grave and the witness, if they swapped, like maybe the professor woke up, killed the witness, and then they swapped places, like he buried the witness there, and then the professor's alive to him free. They established that no one really knows what he looked like. Like, he, it, wasn't pub it wasn't publicized, really, this whole, whole event. I don't know. The only thing I can say f makes sense is that we know that, you know, the wax figure was stolen and it was returned without the head. So whoever stole the wax figure, it seems like they're trying to hide the professor's true identity. So that's, that's all I really got. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but that's something I came up with. I was thinking about that specifically a lot um, since the last recording. And yeah, last, lastly, like I said, we made our way to the, um, to the warehouse. We're in like a secret room, I guess, or what was a locked room. Because we heard a commotion in here, so we ran back here. Apparently everything is turned upside down. And there are footprints you can see there on the ceiling, so... I'm wondering if somehow the room turns or something. But we're about to go into a, uh, one of these um, deduction thingies. Deduction spectaculars. I feel this is going to be a confusing one, because we're going to have to figure out what's going on with this room, I guess. But... Let's see what's going on. Once again, I can draw two conclusions from the scene we see before us. The first is that the inverted nature of the furniture in this room 
is the worker Drever himself. Okay, that would make sense. Oh, but how could you? I'm a genius. And the second conclusion, don't interrupt me, is that the small device on the floor there is without question completely genuine. So, so it's probably not at all. Please, Mr. Sholmes, you must explain everything. Now! It would be a pleasure. Watch this totally accurate uh, summary. After all, it is a great detective's civic duty to teach Scotland Yard the finer points of the trade. <laughs> Look at that face, all scrunched up. Arr! Get on with it, Sholmes! Well, Inspector Gregson seems delighted with the idea anyway. <laughs> that face. <laughs> you look like an idiot. Oh, you deflected the inspector's glare with such fortitude there, Mr. Sholmes. Well done. You're too kind, my dear madam. I hereby dedicate this great deduction to you. He pulls out a rose. Can't you stand just there, Miss Suzato? Oh, yes. I'd be delighted. I've dreamt of this day for a long, long time. So, shall we begin? Once again, Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. One day I'll remember that that's the name of that. <laughs> Every time we get to one, I'm like, what's it called again? Deduction Spectacular? Anyway, not that it matters. Logic and reasoning spectacular. The great deduction. The game is afoot. Topic one. Flipped furniture. Let's see where this goes. I'm so excited. It's plain to see that this room is a complete disarray. That's true, because usually, usually we're like interrogating somebody or accusing someone of something, but we don't have anyone specifically, so Susan is a stand in. The bed, the table, and the chairs, the lamp. Everything is upside down. Where this fucking Alice in Wonderland? Almost as if every item in the room had, until recently, been happily positioned on the ceiling. Bef ah, okay. Before falling straight down onto the floor. Um, Suzuto, do you know something? <laughs> it's me! I did it! I'm the killer! What? <laughs> every item in the room was on the ceiling. Are, are you suggesting that? Indeed, the key here. Oh, this is cool. What's happening? It is gravity. Oh, this is so cool. It would appear that technology has at last succeeded in freeing us from the great peril pull of the earth. Bam! But the gravity in this room was reversed and then suddenly restored to normality. Goodness! Okay, how- and are you gonna explain why or how? Or are you just gonna go with that? The inverted furniture clearly reveals the truth about the part gravity played in this whole business. Did he have some kind of anti-gravity device? I quite understand your skepticism, Ms. Suzato. I too was incredulous at first. However, my conviction in my analysis was cemented when I observed this. Uh... Oh, Jesus. An anti-gravity device, almost identical one that featured in a dream of mine only the other day, in fact. So it must be real. How, how, why are things just floating randomly? But then why does it have a clock on it? A most relevant question indeed. That is a timing device that controls when the gravity direction will switch. There is clearly a requirement for the engineer to be able to restore normal gravity automatically. And the commotion we heard earlier from the other side of the door was the moment that the restoration occurred. Bam. <laughs> it just falls to the floor and explodes. Yes, the reason why everything in here has been turned upside down is because of the anti-gravity device. Are you screwing with us, Sholmes? Or, or are you serious? <laughs> so you see, we need to look no further to explain the state in which we now find this room. The direction in which gravity acts in here was reversed by Mr. Drever. Before being restored to normality in an automatic fashion system, fashioned some time later by the timer device. I witnessed precisely this scene in a dream I once had when I fell out of bed. Aha! Facts! <laughs> okay, Sholmes, okay. Did you take your medicine? Because gravity was reversed. Missing engineer. So where did he go? Now let us consider the next conundrum. What was our engineer friend's aim? 
Indubitably, the greatest clue we have to explain his actions is above our heads. How are you gonna explain that one? Guess how is it possible that there are footprints all the way up there on the ceiling? A question whose answer will lead us neatly to the truth, my dear madam. The reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby skylight. Of course, Trevor's aim was singular to escape, and he succeeded. Unless he's hiding in this room. However, there's but one way into this room. Excepting the skylight, that is. Ah. Oh, hello. This is trippy as hell. By inverting the gravity in here, Drever was able to fall conveniently to the ceiling. And make his escape via the otherwise inaccessible skylight, leaving those footprints behind on the way. So basically his whole theory is, has to do with a gravity device that probably doesn't exist. But the ceiling in here is very high, Mr. Sholmes. Since the gravity reversal was sudden, wouldn't Mr. Drever have fallen up to the ceiling rather violently? Yes, it would have been hilarious. Hmm, falling up is both scientifically and philosophically a rather interesting concept, I feel. <laughs> That's true. But the man was cornered with nowhere to run, so escape through the skylight was his only option. You may recall that I found this in the room earlier, which I believe offers a solution. Oh, the, the rope. Ah. To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this rope? By anchoring one into the wall, the man was able to lower himself safety, safely to the ceiling. Very confusing. It explains how Drevo was able to escape this room before our arrival. He reversed the pull of gravity and fled via the skylight. I honestly, have, I still have no better theory though than what I suggested, which is also kind of far-fetched. I'm, 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 uh, I'm getting on his case, saying like, "Oh, this is ridiculous," and I'm, 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 I'm literally sitting here theorizing that the room turned, like the room, the whole room just was able to turn like that. So, I guess my theory isn't much better. And personally, I should very much like to reverse the pull of gravity again now, just for fun. <laughs> Let's do it. Escape via the skylight. Okay. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this topsy-turvy puzzle. Now let's find out just how wrong you are about everything. <laughs> what the hell, man? Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was playing with Toby here. Ah, oh, Herlock Sholmes is so dreamy. He's completely spellbound. Yep, looks like it. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, there's just one thing that troubles me. Well, actually a lot of things. I would expect nothing less. You are destined to be troubled by just one thing for the rest of your life. Aha! The thing is, is this thing actually possible? An anti-gravity device, I mean? I mean, he freaking made a teleporter, so... Assume, well, then again, we don't know that it was meant to do that, so... It was all a fake. I would say that with man's current scientific knowledge at the turn of the 20th century. It's no more possible than instantaneous kinesis. Exactly. <laughs> but your whole deduction hinges on it. On what you saw in a dream. Ah, but my dear fellow. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Aha! Isn't that a, isn't that a Sherlock Holmes like famous line? Wait, that's, that's somebody else. I've definitely heard it before. However improbable it may seem. Ah, <sighs> okay then. We'll just roll with it. It's a marvelous line, wouldn't you agree? One of my more enduring pearls, pearls of wisdom. Yeah, it's gotta be a Sherlock Holmes line. I had Iris come up with the exact phrasing. My original was clumsy. <laughs> so it's really Iris who came up with that. Yes, I have a feeling I've read it on something that Miss Suzuto lent me once. Objection. Oh, I haven't heard Suzuto yell an objection, at least not in a while. Actually, there is one other thing, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, uh, the spell is broken at last. Lay it on him. The rope you found was on the floor, wasn't it? Indeed it was. In lonely coiled near the wall. But Mr. Drebad used it to escape in the way you described. Wouldn't it still be tied to the wall? About that. <laughs> 
mysteries inevitably unravel in the end, as I think you'll find the ropes. And as evidence of such, you need only look at the mystery we face in this room, now skillfully unraveled. That argument is as circular as the coil of the rope. Gotta love circular arguments. I think perhaps we might need to give Mr. Shorm the usual little helping hand. I'm sure with some minor corrections, the great detective's great deduction will lead us to the truth. Yes, you're right. We got this. And we must do it quickly before Enoch Drever gets too far away. If you're ready, then let us resume. Herlock Sholmes is logic and reasoning spectacular. Let's do it. I actually do really like these. These are always so fun. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. You ding it. You ding bat. Flip furniture because gravity was reversed. What a load of bull. It's plain to see that this room is a complete disarray. The bed, the table and chairs, the lamp. Everything is upside down. Topsy turvy, as some would say. Almost as if every item in the room had until recently been happily positioned on the ceiling. Before falling straight down onto the floor. If you had him in the room was on the ceiling, or are you suggesting that? Indeed, the key here is gravity. It would appear that technology has at last succeeded in freeing us from the great pull of the earth. That's totally it, you got it. No objections, <laughs> for the gravity in this room was reversed and then suddenly restored to normality. Goodness! The inverted furniture clearly revealed the truth about the part gravity played in the whole business. Nope. I mean, another theory for the uh, furniture could be maybe there's some kind of struggle in here and furniture, furniture just went flying. But that doesn't explain the footprints on the ceiling. To think gravity could have been reversed in this very room. I find the idea, sorry, the whole idea utterly enthralling. Only Mr. Sholmes could conceive of such an explanation. Yep. But the man himself admitted it was a scientific impossibility, so he's full of crap. Yes, you're quite right. We must completely discount the idea at once. Oh, that's unusually merciless of you, Miss Suzido. Good job. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. A dreamy man once said that. The great detective himself said so, didn't he? While well, refusing to part with his dreams of an anti-gravity devices. With his dreams of anti-gravity devices. Yes, I suppose so. Well, let's see if examining this topsy- I, uh, I said that. This topsy-turvy scene a little more closely. Reveal some proof that shows exactly what the gravity in this room was or wasn't doing. Let's do this. Okay, I do see a safe. So, the inverted furniture clearly reveals the truth about the part gravity played in this whole business. Let's start examining things. All the furniture in here is very conspicuously upside down, certainly. Yes. It does immediately put you in mind of some strange quirk of gravity, I admit. Ah, could it be that a mini whirlwind passed through here, do you think? I'm not sure that's much more plausible than Mr. Sholmes' explanation. <laughs> Oh dear, saying the first thing that comes into your head isn't the way forward here, it seems. Yeah, unfortunately not. I guess... I guess what we might want to point out is the safe, right? The safe, Everything is upside down, but the safe is not. Neither is this thing. <laughs> Probably something to do with the safe, I would think. Because this is all the same thing, right? This is all just the inverted furniture. But the safe is uh, secured to the floor. Ah, look, Miss Suzuto. And everything seems to be upside down in here. This safe is conspicuously the right way up. Have you noticed? Yes, that's true. But look more closely at the safe's feet. Ah, it's, yeah, it's bolted down. Ah, uh, that's a lot of very large bolts fixing it to the floor. Think before you speak. That's what you want to say, isn't it? I really put my foot in my mouth there. I certainly didn't say that. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Cause yeah, if it's bolted down, then that would make sense. That it, it didn't go anywhere. So I don't know if that's what we're trying to point out. There's also a lot of stuff in here. 
The only two things I can examine are the safe and the inverted furniture, so I can't um, I can't see it being having to do with anything else. There's nothing under the bed here. There's so much to look at too. I'm making sure that there isn't. What's that on the floor? Oh. Oh, I didn't even see that. Well, well. I was expecting to find a pretty bunch of flowers in here. That's for sure. Now those, I don't think are bolted down. <laughs> Oh, look at that! I know, that slender little vase looks like it's about to topple at any moment. But the flowers are thriving. Somehow it makes you think of the fragility of life, wouldn't you say? Uh, sure. To be honest, Mr. Narahodo, I have no idea what you're talking about. Something else about it made a rather deeper impression on me. That's gotta be it. Because again, we know this is bolted down, but this definitely isn't. And it's a vase, so if it fell, it should have shattered. I'm gonna go with it. Take that! Take that! Get him, Ryanosuke. But you know what? That doesn't that doesn't bode well for my theory either. <laughs> if the room turned, that certainly would have still crashed and uh and uh, you know, shattered into a bajillion pieces. The upway rage clearly reveals the truth about the part gravity played in this whole business. Upon my word, Mr. Naruhodo, you surpassed yourself by completely turning my argument on its head. Trying to impress your assistant there, here perhaps. You are correct, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> no one is trying to steal your spotlight here, Mr. Sholmes. Trust me. As you rightly say, though it appears at first glance that all the furniture in the room is upside down. This unassuming slender vase is standing keenly to attention. And unlike the large safe, there's nothing affixing it to the floor. And it's the exception that breaks the rule. In short, much as it pains me, you are right. The gravity in this room was never inverted at all. You don't say. My my deepest sympathies for your loss. <laughs> oh, poor Mr. Sholmes. Anyway, moving on. But the show must go on, so let us continue with our deductions. Now that we know this contrivance is not in fact an anti-gravity device, there remains but one other possibility. <laughs> it is a bomb that is about to go off any second. You don't say. Someone deliberately turned over every piece of furniture in here. This might sound obvious, but leaves one mystery very much unsolved. Namely, why would anyone choose to do that? Quite. And naturally, there is an, there is an explanation. Yes, the reason why everything in here has been turned upside down is because of the anti-gravity device. Which doesn't make any sense, since we just debunked that. He's absolutely determined that this device must have something to do with it, isn't he? I'm afraid the law of an exciting scientific explanation is too strong. Well, there's no doubt that somebody did this. Somebody turned all this furniture over. Like I said, the only thing I can think of is if there was a struggle. And that would explain why not everything is turned upside down. Because like I said, both of our theories, if the room turned or something, and if it was gravity, everything would have been overturned. So whoever it was must have had a reason. I'm afraid nothing comes to mind at all, though. Well, let's look around and see if the answer presents itself. Unless the flowers were left there after the uh, incident, like the room turned or whatever, whatever happened, and the vase was left there after? I don't know why. The reason why everything in here has been turned upside down is because of the anti-gravity device. Well, we'll look at it, but I don't think so. We've already established that gravity wasn't actually reversed in here, haven't we? In other words, this isn't an anti-gravity device at all. Which makes me very curious to know what sort of device it is. But I think it, for now it's clear that we're looking for an answer elsewhere. Okay. Duly noted. Ah! Okay then. That's something. Safe? I can't- Four, three... 2582. Look, there's something written on the other side of this armchair. Oh, so is. Did whoever came in here. Probably wasn't Drebber then. Whoever came in here was probably looking for the safe combination. So he's overturning furniture, looking under furniture, and whatever. And then he eventually came across the, uh, the code here, I'm assuming. And then maybe tried to get the safe open. That's probably what we heard. Okay, look, there's something on the other side of this armchair. Oh, yes, safe. 432582. Or more accurately, Leon. 
safe. As in safe and secure. Uh, no, Inosuke, just no. As in secure lockable box, I think. Admittedly, more likely. Well, there is a large safe bolted to the floor on the other side of the room, so yes. So you mean this number would let us open it? I wonder why it's written here, though. Okay, so that's gotta be it then. The person was looking for the safe combination. Let me just see if there's anything else to examine, though. I don't think so. Let's have at it! Take that! Take that! Yes, the reason why everything in here has been turned upside down is be it's because of the safe combination. Precisely, I believe, Mr. Naruhodo, that you have a, had a very similar experience once, did you not? Yes, last year. When I bought a lottery ticket and noted the ticket number down on the inside cover of a book, just in case. Okay. That's it, but people are forgetful souls at heart, and always make a written note of important information. That isn't something that happened in the game, right? That, was, that must have been something that happened between games, or... Or just not during a case. Just keeping the ticket itself safe would be more sensible, I think. Nonsense! And what, pray, happened next, Mr. Naruhodo? When the day of the draw came around, I'd forgotten which book I'd written the number in and had to turn my room upside down to find it. Ta-da! That's it, but people are forgetful souls at heart and always forget where they've noted things down. Not if you always know things in the same place, boys. I actually won the second prize, you know. <laughs> but I couldn't remember which magazine I slipped the ticket into, so I had to turn my room upside. Thank you, Mr. Naruhodo. I believe I proved my point now. You can shut up. Which is that a very similar scenario has clearly unfolded in this room. Finding himself requiring access to the safe, the occupant of this room needed the combination code. He remembered that he'd written it on the underside of a piece of furniture but forgot which one. Leading to the state in which we now find the room. Like I said, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, I mean, the more logical conclusion is that it wasn't Mr. Drebber. Yes, Mr. Drebber returned all the furniture in here in a desperate hurry to locate the combination code that would unlock the safe. There we go, new conclusion. To find the safe combination. Solved. Escaped via the skylight. Now let's consider the next conundrum. What was our engineer friend's aim? Indubitably, the greatest clue we have to explain this action is above our heads. Yes, how is it possible that there are footprints all the way up there on the ceiling? A question whose answer will lead us neatly to the truth, my dear madam. The reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby skylight. Well, if a change in the direction of gravity can't explain it, then how do the footprints get here? Get there. Yes, I feel as though that particular mystery has just become even harder to solve. I can't think of any other way to explain it at all. Yeah, I'm at a loss too. Ooh, life was so much simpler in those, uh, halcyon days when gravity could be reversed. <laughs> it was minutes ago, and those halcyon days never existed in the first place. All a figment of his imagination. But I suppose we must simply put our faith in Mr. Sholmes and observe the area in more detail. Putting our faith in Mr. Sholmes is what gets us into these situations in the first place. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, the footprints are also on the balloon. That was quick. Is that the only thing I can even examine? There's a picture down there. Oh, the skylight itself. It looks like these are the only windows in the room. In other words, if you want to escape without using the door, these skylights would be the only way. Yes, that's true. But even so. And right next to the only escape route, we noticed some t telltale footprints. Nevertheless, as we said many times now, gravity can't explain how they got there. The powerful strength in the soles of the man's shoes could. I solved it. Have you been having strange dreams as well, like Mr. Sholmes? Have you been hitting the sauce? Okay, can't examine the footprints over here. 
to examine the balloon without the footprints. This is a gas balloon, isn't it? It's tiny, but it does seem to be a real balloon. <coughs> yes, I think you're right. I think it's healing, like keeping it up. A green gas balloon. Why does that seem to ring a bell with me? Because this looks like a replica of the balloon that, uh, what's his face? That Asman fell from. If you can see, there are footprints on this balloon too. Look. Oh, yes. Surely that's a clue, isn't it? So what it tells us, I'm not sure. Okay, I thought I was gonna have to point that out specifically, but... Oh! Oh! I didn't even see the shoe on top. I'm so confused, <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. It's hard to believe, but... There's a shoe up there, look! Oh yes! And there are more footprints on this little balloon, too. Perhaps the shoe was thrown up there and became large, do you think? If so, then judging from the number of footprints... It must have been thrown up several times. Why would anyone be throwing shoes up at the ceiling, though? Oh dear. That's beyond me, I'm afraid. Yeah, I don't... Okay, so... Before I saw the shoe, I was... Uh, this, it didn't make any more sense to me. I'm like, why... Are they trying to pop the balloon? Maybe there's something in this balloon that they're trying to get at. Okay, but I guess that's what we're looking for. The reason they're footprints is because of the shoe. Take that! Take that! Aha! The reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby shoe. And on closer inspection, there are clearly footprints all over the balloon as well. In other, in other words, the aim was never the scarlet at all, but the balloon. But, for what purpose? A green balloon. Hmm, that seems somewhat familiar, Data. It does. Ah! It was a piece of green balloon envelope that Mr. Narahodo and Iris found at the scene. And inside the green balloon that Master Gotts claims he saw above the stage when the incident occurred. Was the second birdcage, the crux of the whole instantaneous kinesis deception. You, you mean to say... If we assume the balloon in here is a model of the one used on the day, there is a strong possibility something may be concealed inside it. That's what I'm thinking. Something out of Skonda was desperate to retrieve before making a hasty getaway. But, but the balloon's out of reach. Hence why it was ordered to project to a projectile, namely the shoe. Ah. Well, probably Drebber intended to tear a hole in the envelope by sailing with the shoe. However, his efforts were thwarted when the shoe itself became a prisoner of the lofty heights. Oh dear, we desperately need to examine that balloon. If only there was some way we could see inside. You may recall that I found this in the room earlier, which I believe offers a solution. Oh, did he maybe try climbing up to it? Oh. Or maybe he tried lassoing it to get the balloon down. Oh, the rope! To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this rope? Yeah, I don't think he climbed up. He probably went to lasso it, maybe. Mr. Shorms has managed to bring the deduction back to the rope. All right, I have to admit, that was clever. So we just throw the rope up to the balloon and then pull it down to us on the ground? Oh, that's what I was thinking, so that's probably not it. Which is much easier said than done, I feel. It could take us a very long time as well. True. Perhaps we need a more surefire method. In fact, we already have one, of course, don't we? To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this rope? The crossbow? The screwdriver? Ah. I know we got this, uh, we got this here. Okay, now I'm a little confused, but I'm confused what they're asking, what they're getting at. Perhaps we need a more surefire method. In fact, we already have one. I mean, the crossbow, right? 
I'm gonna try it. Take that. There we go. Okay. Maybe he had another crossbow. To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this crossbow? That was found at the scene, in fact. And in all likelihood, belongs to Mr. Drever. If the man had only bolted away with him that day, he could have avoided losing a shoe at such a critical time as this. Oh, I get it. Okay, that's what they're saying. He couldn't use it, so we have to resort to another method. So, shall we? Your curiosity is deeply stirred, no doubt, my dear fellows. What is it that Enoch Drever has hidden inside that balloon? BAM! Let's just see... Is that the professor's head? Ah! Well, what the? Uh, a waxwork? Okay, why why was that in there? I, I thought it was gonna be maybe somebody we knew. Indeed it is, a waxwork head inside a metal mask. A mask that is shut tight and fastened with a strong and quite impenetrable lock. Oh, unless unless whoever stole the the um, wax figure put it, put the head in a metal lock. So we can't see the face inside, that means. Just a moment, this this is the head of a waxwork model. Would that mean... Oh, goodness. I see you've joined the dots, Miss Suzuto. Excellent. Uh, of course. A headless waxwork model. The case of the abducted Madame Tutspell's model that what you'd largely solve. It was only the head of the killer that was still missing. And here it is. Indeed it was. But I believe Madame Tutspell will now have to settle her sizable account with me. This, as you have now surmised, is the head of the infamous professor. Yes. But, why is it here? Beats me. I mean, we can conclude that Drebber is the one who stole the waxwork model. This conclusively confirms my suspicions. The man responsible for stealing the professor from Madame Tuspels and returning it, sans tête, earlier today was none other than Enoch Drebber. This is incredible. Professor Hairbrain's case and the waxwork abduction are... They're inextricably linked! Who would have thought? By Enoch Drebber's workshop! Yeah, we're finally, we're finally getting, the, getting the connection now. Like I said, I figured none of this was coincidence, right? I figured it would be all connected. Um, but I love that. I love when seemingly separate events, you know, are inextricably linked, as Rienoski just put it. Waxwork head. The head of the professor. Wa waxwork that was stolen from the Madame Tuspel special exhibit. So again, I don't know if he put the mask on. The metal casing. Or if it was already like that. And again, that just furthers my sus suspicion that he wants to hide the identity. Maybe it looks like him. Or maybe... Yeah, I don't know. Because like I said, if Enoch... Drever switched places... If he was the uh, professor and switched places with the witness, quote unquote, maybe that head is uh looks exactly like him. I don't know. You think somebody would have maybe noticed that? But since he's such a famous figure, well, it appears our logical pleasure cruise has come to an end, my dear fellows. Oh yeah, we didn't really end it in the usual way, did we? All that remains is yes to speak with the architect of this adventure. Oh, we're still going. Is he here? The architect? You mean Mr. Drever? As it seems quite impossible that he escaped via one of the skylights. Obviously, the man must still be here in the room. What? What if he's in the safe? And his location should be abundantly clear. If you simply reflect on the journey we've made together during this deduction. You know, Drever's right here, somewhere in this room? So, Mr. Narahodo, will you do the honors? Yes, of course. Mr. Drevel's hiding place must be the... There is a wardrobe. But, I would have to say the safe. Because the wardrobe has nothing to do with anything. Same thing with the cupboard. We know the skylight has nothing to do with it. 
I guess I can do the usual and ins inspect things, right? Personally, I still think he might have escaped via one of those skylights. But you heard what Mr. Sholm said. The man must still be here in the room. And that's exactly why I don't think he's here in the room. Sholmes is full of crap all the time. <laughs> can you imagine? I can't argue with that, Rinosuke. You're right. I'm afraid your opinion might put you at uh, lo loggerheads with the great detective, Miss Suzuto. Trust in me. Sometimes a man must stand up for what he believes in and fight. Oh, well, in that case, I'll leave you to it. I'll be here in the real world. <laughs> I can't help it that Sholm is wrong all the time. He's in this cupboard, of course. This looks to be a cupboard for cups and saucers and the like. Ah. An ingenious hiding place. Oh, is it? Well, when you say covered, you automatically think of cups and saucers, don't you? And the clever engineer knows that, so he knows you'd never look for him in there. Because he's not crockery! I'm so smart. But sadly, it does seem to be full of only crockery. Oh well, worth a try. Yeah, and it makes sense. Like, if he was opening the safe, and maybe at that exact moment, like, he either had the safe open or almost had it all the way open and then he heard us coming he would have just like popped in there I guess he went to Narnia that's it if you need to hide there's no better place than a wardrobe I stand firmly by that oh yes you had some experience with that yourself a year ago didn't you oh that's right he was in the uh he was in the cupboard when a Cosmo was killed he was knocked out though We'll find him in there. Mark my words. He'll be curled up in a vault, trembling and hungry. In fact, my own hand is trembling just thinking about making the discovery. Let me open it. Never mind, Mr. Narahodo. He could be hiding somewhere else, you know. Like I said, it's gotta be the safe. It is kind of small, but... Look at all that mess in front of the safe. Yes, plans and, uh, and accountant ledgers. Almost as if somebody was in a hurry to empty the contents of the safe, in fact. Aha! Okay, let's do it. Take that! Take that! Let's get him! Before we gain access to this back room, we heard noises from in here. But it tells us that the engineer was still in the building at the point in time. He was in fact searching for the combination of his safe. First for time, made no attempt to right the furniture that he overturned in the process. From which we can deduce that his search for the combination happened very rec recently indeed. In summary, Mr. Enoch Drever, we got you, boy, is at this very moment inside the safe. Got him, I hope. This concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this topsy-turvy puzzle. Missing Engineer Conclusion. Inside the safe. Solve. Deduction complete. Elementary, my dear Rienosuke. Let's get him. Watchy looks nothing like the Enoch Driver we know. And maybe that's why the, uh... Maybe that's why the head was stolen. If my theory's right. So, Mr. Navajoto... I think perhaps it's time we ended this game of hide and seek, don't you? By opening the safe, you mean? What else? Let's see. The combination was 1... 432582. I got a photo photorealistic memory. I knew that. Alright then, here it goes. Come on. Let's see him. <laughs> Hello there. Nope, that's definitely him. Oh, that looks very uncomfortable. What's he freaking wearing? The Infinity Gauntlet? <laughs> what is that? He's got a gold glove. You found me. <laughs> oh, that's a cool hand. Is he... What is he, a robot? He's the Terminator. <laughs> what is going on? Is he human? Oh, he's cool. Okay, that was cool. What an entrance. 
A plus. Right then, sir. Mr. Enoch, do I have a for Doom? Correct. You better start talking. You tricked Professor Hairbrain with that bogus machine you built. And you shall have to explain the theft of the waxwork for Madame Tuspells as well. Whilst I would be delighted to answer your many questions. Oh, look at me go. I've got the moves, don't I? Personally, I would advise you to activate my little parcel first. Deactivate? Oh, the bomb? Your parcel? I'm not touching it. I have fur, of course. To the time bomb. I left it in a most prominent position. It was a time bomb, aha! Ah! Ha ha ha! I see. Stunned silence. You all giving up to die with me then? Oh gosh, he's. He's creepy, but very cool. No! Let's get it. Mr. Sholmes, there's only seven seconds to spare. Oh gosh. That was too close for comfort. I've got one foot in the grave already. Are you trying to help us get a killer or get us killed? Well, it worked. Mr. Mr. Sholmes' deduction can be completely life-altering, can't they? But I can just arm, arm a bomb with ease. Well, my dear fellows, that was a close shave. Oh. The resemblance to an anti-gravity device is really quite startling, I must say. Right, that's exactly what it looks like. Anti-gravity devices don't exist! Damn it! Phew. I wouldn't push it, Mr. Sholmes. She'll flip, she'll flip you upside down. Oh, look at him. Bless him. I was not expecting that when we found him. That was quite an entrance, though. Um. Okay. Is it worth examining things again? I, I guess so. I still can't believe we were nearly blown up. What was that side red glance, a native Mr. Nohoto? I thought that deducing mach- Uh, yeah, that deducing meaning from the movement of people's eyes was your specialty, Mr. Sholmes. Never mind that now. Let's see what Mr. Drebber has to say for himself. Okay, so we can't examine things. Okay, fair enough. But you know what there's always time for? There's always time to present my armband to whoever will look. It might surprise you to learn that I'm actually a lawyer from the Empire of Japan. Can you believe it? I detest lawyers. They wield so-called special powers in an attempt to grind down our freedoms. Yes, let me be quite clear. I, I want to try and kind of give him like... Because the voice I'm giving him sounds a lot like Van Zyke's. I'm going to try and give him like almost like a Van Zyke's voice, but kind of robotic. Because he seems like he's like part machine. So let's see how that works. I detest lawyers very much. Any chance to negative make a positive in this case? Okay. Let's see if he has anything to say about this stuff. Mr. Drebber, look at this, please. Ooh. All I care about are my sexy moves. Do you, um, have anything to say about it? No. Are these strange mechanical movements supposed to be some sort of answer? <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this man. Okay, he hasn't had anything else to say yet, but before I present this last thing, I realize we haven't looked at it yet. We haven't examined it. So, let's go ahead and do that. If we can. Oh, there's a little lock on the side. We have to find the key. This lock does, very, does look very strong, doesn't it? There's definitely no way you can remove the mask yourself if it was put on you. What a terrible way to treat someone. Even a convicted criminal. I know. The man in the iron mask. It's starting to make me livid, actually. Even though he was a serial killer. Mr. Naruto, please, calm down. I mean, just think about it. Imagine if you had an itch on your cheek all of a sudden. You'd be utterly helpless. That is true torture. Well, yes, that's true, but I'm not sure. That warrants quite so much anger. Oh, right, my B, sorry. I get where he's coming from, though. That would be 
That would suck. <laughs> I think that's all I get. I think that's all there is to look at. Okay. And he has nothing to say anyway. Okay. So let us just talk to him. The time bomb. Start with that. Got a death wish, have ya? Hiding right behind a ticking time bomb. Or right beside a ticking time bomb. Maybe the safe would have protected him from it. Please, why do you suppose I chose to hide inside the safe? It's no ordinary safe. It's specially designed. A dynamite explosion wouldn't leave a scratch on it. So, in fact, the safe was the only safe place. Aha! See what I did there? Precisely. Peepy mofo. Once you climbed inside, you wouldn't have been able to get out again. I invite you to look more closely. Is there a latch on the inside? Ah, okay. The safe is filled, fitted with a handle on the inside to allow the door to be unlocked from within. Ah, so it is. Aha! I had always intended to blow this place to smithers in any case. I just wasn't expecting uninvited guests to come along and screw up my plans. Do you? Do you mean to say? You were planning to blow us all up? Precisely. No, no, that was unforeseen. What do you mean? Most people run, you see, when they see a ticking time bomb at their feet. Ah, right. I calculated the time requirement for retreat to a safe distance and set the device accordingly. But we aren't so smart. <laughs> But your seemingly endless discourse in here through a spanner in the works. Yeah. Is something wrong, Gregson? Do I have something on my face? Besides the usual eyes, ears, nose, and mouth? Uh -huh. Shut up, Shones. Okay, so what happened here? Well, we kind of know. What on earth happened in here? You found me, haven't you? No need to screw me down any further. Everything in here is precisely what it seems. Yeah, well, we'll be given a third going over. Don't you worry, Trevor. What fails to click with me is how you were able to locate my workshop. That's how I was not expecting. When I heard whistling from the other room, I knew it was time to bolt. Whistling? Was, was that Gina? Who, who whistled? Ah! That would have been me! Oh! For some reason, I woke in fine fettle today! You idiot! No words, just tightly squeezed chips. What, they're still edible? Clearly I must have a screw loose though, as I couldn't remember the combination for the safe. Okay, so it was that. I mean, at this point I figured that was the case, but... I really thought maybe somebody else was in here and that's why they were looking for it. And another one loose as I couldn't remember on which piece of furniture I'd written it down. We also found a rope over by the wall. That is my special rope. Yes, I had hoped to exit through the skylight, but sadly the rope was too short. Aha! That's funny. <laughs> that was part of the plan all along. So I then set about searching for the combination code to open the safe. And burning the incriminating blueprint, don't forget. Regrettably, though, you failed to retrieve the head from the balloon among the rafters. My B. And after that, you hid yourself inside the safe? Having first set this parcel ticking? Well, I had no intention of being nailed by the police. That is all she wrote. I think we have a fairly good idea of what's been going on here now. What about the two incidents you've evidently been involved in recently? Yeah, but now it's time to get back to that. Professor Herbrain's instantaneous kinesis experiment at the Great Exhibition. And the waxwork model you stole, which this head belongs to. They're all tied to you, buddy. That's no ordinary head, you know. That's the head of the professor. Ha, 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 ha. Clad in a mask with lock so strong, I'm unable to open it safely to reveal the killer's identity. I've been considering carrying it around as protection. That's enough! 
Oh. It's you. What's going on here, Gregson? I'm sure you're aware that I have sold jurisdiction to investigate here. Ah, um, yes, well. Dr. Scythe again. So the forensic investigation team are here. Here to interrupt. And you know full well this engineer is a key witness. Why are you allowing this lawyer access to him? If Lord Strongheart knew of this, you'd be finished. Oh, don't be so hard on the guy. You lot, leave at once. My dear madam, there's no need for such a threatening tone, I assure you. After all, that's no way to greet an old acquaintance, is it, Dr. Scythe? You know each other? Yes, we were lovers. Aha! Iris, did I ever tell you that you have a sister? <laughs> not, I don't know why I said that. It's not, it's not like Iris is uh, his daughter or anything. Hello, Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes knows Dr. Scythe? If it's protecting the machine next door that's causing such a sour expression on your face, you are quite misguided. It's really nothing more than a shell, you. Get out! Now! Okay. Okay. But of course, we'll show ourselves the door. I see you haven't softened at all. Mr. Navajoto? Yes? What do you want me? But a pair of delightfully entertaining investigation have run their course for today. But, but Mr. Sholmes, we can take her. <laughs> Let us leave this place in the doctor's capable hands. Alrighty. I said get out now, all of you. Your present hair is not required either, Gregson. What is, sh is she hiding something? Understood. But, I'll just say one thing before I head off. If it wasn't for this lawyer and his companions, we never have found this place, and the whole workshop could have been blown to bits. There was a time bomb set in here, that this lot disarmed. Inspector! Yay, he threw us a bone. Specifically Toby. <laughs> Don't care. Ka, ka, ka. Something giving you a chuckle, has it? Drebber? Ah, so sorry. Didn't mean to offend. You're quite right, of course. You did disarm the time bomb, didn't you? Uh, I, th I think so. Yes, you did disarm that one. Gina, throw it! <laughs> throw it out the skylight! Nah, I think this one's safe. I think he's implying that there's another one. Eh? What are you? That one? Y you mean... Ka, 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 ha, ha, ha. The city will burn. Uh oh. Is there one at the e Great Exhibition? Oh shoot, he's gonna blow up the machine, the device. Leave! Run! You're gonna die! Okay, a little too late. Yeah. It was an hour later that we heard the news of the enormous explosion, another one that ripped through the experimentation stage at the Great Exhibition. Professor Hairbrain's invention and all of its secrets were blown away forever, including the evidence that would have been left behind. To be continued. Dun dun dun. Man, this is, I keep saying this every episode, but it gets crazier and crazier. Okay, so there we go. We finally, three episodes later, we uh, finished the investigation. So I'm assuming we will be moving into a, yes, yeah, this trial part three. So we'll be moving into another trial. And I'm assuming this might be it. This might be the last one. For this case, of course, we've got two chapters to go. But yeah, I mean, it's too early to say because, you know, we we just, we haven't finished it yet. We, we still have the... This last trial, what I'm assuming is this last trial, but so far this may very well be my favorite case of either Great Ace Attorney game. This is really good. This has been excellent. There's been lots of, you know, lots of different mysteries, different threads. There's even like actiony stuff, like explosions and almost like a some kind of terrorist threat type of deal. You know, it's it's been really good. It's just been I've been on the edge of my seat the entire time. And I'm still very confused. Every time I think I'm onto something, I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. 
I'm, I'm starting to wonder if Mr. Drever is even human. Like, I mean, I know these are all wax figures. <laughs> Could he be like an elect, like a, a, an animatronic or something? Like, I don't know. It's hard to say because there are a lot of eccentric characters in these games. So he might just be like, because he's an engineer, right? They might have just made him like part machine, part human for the aesthetic. But I don't know, man. I'm uh. I, I feel lost, but again, that, that has me excited to find out what's happening. So that's where I'm going to leave it here. So thank you guys so much for watching, as always. I really do appreciate you guys. Um, go ahead and leave uh, your thoughts in the comments. You know, Let me know if you're liking the Let's Play, what you're liking about it. Again, if you haven't played the game, you can you know let me know any theories you may have. But um, yeah, i just really loving this game. And I... I Love sharing this journey with you. So uh, go ahead and uh, hit the like button as well, the notification bell, subscribe to the channel, and share the video, of course, with all your friends, family, and loved ones. Once again, I really do appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. So take care, and bye-bye.